Oh, hello there. I'm Dr. Kennedy, and I'm going to review some AP calculus with you today. We're going to do 2018 number six free response question. It's readily available online if you just Google it. All recent past free response questions are accessible to students, including the answer keys. So go check them out. I'm going to put up a screenshot still of the problem here. Pause that frame, attempt the problem on your own, and then watch the video. And then at the end, you can look up the scoring guidelines to see how many points you would have gotten on your initial response. So let's do it. Let's have some fun. You do the math. All right, so part A gives us a differential equation and a slope field. Now they want us to sketch the solution curve that passes through two points, 0, 2, and 1, 0. I'm going to draw the one first that goes through 1, 0. So I plotted the point, and now what you do is you just follow the flow pattern of these slopes. Okay, so I kind of picture if I was on a raft and the slopes that you see represent, let's say, the current, right? what path would you follow? So you try to make it go through that. What you don't want to do is just cross any slope dash, if you can avoid it. And right now I'm drawing the solution curve through the point 0, 2, which is just a horizontal line. Part B says let y equals f of x be the particular solution. Write an equation for the line tangent. Whenever you see that phrase, what you should write down is the slope-intercept form of a line. y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. Whenever I see the equation for the tangent line. All you need is a point and a slope. That's why it's called the point slope. So they give you a point, 1 comma 0. So I'm going to plug those in for y1 and x1. So I have y minus 0 equals blank x minus 1. What goes on the blank space, as Taylor Swift would say, is the derivative. m represents slope. Slope is the derivative. Instantaneous slope, anyway, is the derivative. So we want dy dx at this point, 1, 0. Now look, we were given dy dx, so don't take the derivative. It's already derived for us. So I'm going to plug 1, 0 in for x and y into dy dx. And if you do that, you get 4 thirds. So this is my equation for the tangent line. Now the second part of the problem is to use this equation to approximate f of 0.7. So we're going to plug 0.7 into the linear equation we got, and that will be close to the behavior of the curve at 0.7, because the line is an approximation of the curve. If you think about a tangent line, if you zoom into the curve at that tangent line, you'll be able to zoom in so much that you won't know the difference between the curve and the tangent line. So this is going to be a good approximation of what the curve is doing, because 0.7 is close to 1. That's why this works. So we plug in 0.7, we get negative 0.3. Now I'm a fraction person, I'm not a big fan of decimals, so I'm going to change 0.3 to 3 tenths. The threes cancel out and you get negative 4 over 10. Reduce, you get negative 2 fifths. Negative 0.4 is the decimal equivalent if you're a decimal fan. So the way I'm going to state my answer is that f of 0.7 is approximately negative 2 fifths or negative 0.4. It's not equal to it, that was the linear value, the linear approximation. Okay, let's take a look at part C. Part C wants us to actually find the particular solution. So to solve a Diffie Q, there's a series of steps that I follow. We have to first separate the variables. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to multiply dx to the other side of the equal sign. You could think of it as cross multiplication, right? And I need to use algebra to move the y expression to the left-hand side where the dy is. So we need to separate the y's with the dy's and the x's with the dx's for this to work, right? So I'm dividing both sides. 1 over y minus 2 squared is really y minus 2, the quantity to the negative 2 power, dy. And then I have 1 third x dx. Once you separate, the second step is you integrate. 2, 4, 6, 8. Here's how we integrate. So I'm going to integrate both sides. Now the integral of y minus 2 to the negative 2, this is a job for u substitution. So I'm going to let u be the inner function, y minus 2. du dy, this should say. I think I wrote du dx. Ah, caught my mistake. As usual, not always. But the derivative of u is 1, right? So if I cross multiply that, I get du is equal to dy. That's an easy switch. Switcheroonie. So there's no additional terms here. So I'm going to have u to the negative 2. The dy becomes du. That's easy to integrate. We're going to get u to the negative 1 over negative 1. So on the left-hand side of the equation, we're going to have y minus 2 to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus a constant. I'm going to call it c1. 
because we're going to have a second constant on the other side of the equals. So we're going to do one-third x, integrate that, you get one-third x squared over 2, that's the power rule for integrals, plus another constant, c2. So let's simplify this a little bit. I'm going to have negative 1 over y minus 2. Uh, the first algebraic move I would do is subtract the constant. This is why I put little subscripts, is if I just left them both as c, and I saw c minus c, I might cancel them, but they're two different constants, potentially different. So c2 minus c1, I'm just going to write as c3. It's a third constant. Okay, now what should I do? I am going to multiply both sides by negative y minus 2. Okay, both sides of the equation, to get rid of that denominator over there and also get rid of the negative symbol. Move it to the other side. So I'm just going to have positive 1 on the left-hand side. And as you can see, I'm distributing the negative as I go. So I'm going to have 1 equals negative y plus 2 times 1 sixth x squared plus the constant, c3. And now I want to solve this for y. I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by this term that has x and the constant in it. So I'm going to have 1 over 1 sixth x squared plus a constant, c3, equals negative y plus 2. And then I could just add 2 to the other side and also negate the other side, right? So I see what I'm doing. I'm adding y to the left-hand side, and I'm going to subtract that complex fraction over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to have y equals 2 minus this fraction, or you could do negative fraction plus 2 if you'd like. But this is my general solution. It's not the nicest looking expression or equation, but it's a general solution. So once you have the general solution, which is y equals something in terms of x, I'm going to plug in the particular value that they gave us, the initial value, 1 comma 0. Plug that in for y and x, and we can find out what the constant is. So if I plug in 1 for x and 0 for y, let's see what I get. Okay, I'm making the fraction to the negative 1 power. I'm going to add that over to the left-hand side. All right. And then to get rid of a negative 1 exponent, we want to raise that to the negative 1 power. Why? Because negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So if you're trying to cancel out an exponent, one way to do that is raise a power to a power and you multiply to try to get 1 as the new exponent. So negative 1 times negative 1 gives me 1. So I'm going to have 1 sixth plus c equals 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 half. I'm going to subtract 1 sixth from both sides. So Get a common denominator, 3 over 6 minus 1 over 6. That's going to give me 2 over 6. And 2 over 6 is also known as 1 third. So now don't stop there. That's not your answer. We want the particular solution. The answer is going to be the general solution with the addition of plus c. So I'm going to replace the c with the constant value that I just solved for, which is 1 third. And this is an acceptable answer according to the AP. So that's going to be what I would put. Thank you so much for deciding to spend some time with me reviewing AP Calculus. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Until next time, may the math be with you. Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you get alerted whenever my newest, latest, greatest video is released. Until next time, math has ended. Go in peace.